Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's Pastor Bramick, and today is Thursday. It's August the 5th, and we are starting in Acts chapter 28 today, the final chapter in the book of Acts. We're beginning at verse 1, if you'd like to turn there now and join me. After we were brought safely through, we then learned that the island was called Malta. The native people there showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled the fire and welcomed us all, because it had begun to rain and was cold. When Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and put them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on its hand. When the native people saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, No doubt this man is a murderer. Though he has escaped from the sea, justice has not allowed him to live. He, however, shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. They were waiting for him to swell up or suddenly fall down dead, but When they had waited a long time and saw no misfortune come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. Now in the neighborhood of that place were lands belonging to the chief man of the island named Publius, who received us and entertained us hospitably for three days. It happened that the father of Publius lay sick with fever and dysentery, and Paul visited him and prayed, and putting his hands on him, healed him. And when he... And when this had taken place, the rest of the people on the island who had diseases also came and were cured. They also honored us greatly. And when we were about to sail, they put on board whatever we needed. After three months, we set sail on a ship that had wintered in the island of a ship of Alexandria with the twin gods as a figurehead. Putting in at Syracuse, we stayed there for three days. And from there, we made a circuit and arrived at Regium. And after one day, a south wind sprang up, and the second day we came to Puteoli. There we found brothers and were invited to stay with them for seven days, and so we came to Rome. And the brothers there, when they heard about us, came as far as the forum of Appius and the three taverns to meet us. On seeing them, Paul thanked God and took courage. So God has seen um, for Paul to make his way to Rome and to have the trial before Caesar, and uh, tomorrow we're going to hear more about that. But uh, this 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 whole reading that we've been hearing about in these last final chapters of Acts is showing God's providence. Uh, Paul even wrangles here with a snake, and everyone thinks that Paul's going to be killed by the snake, but Paul is not killed by the snake, and so then they... The people liken Paul to be a god, and and um, God, of course, is protecting Paul from from all such calamities. Um, seeing that he gets to Rome to testify to him uh, in the presence of Caesar, and uh, we're moving in that direction. Uh, it's it's like I said yesterday. It's really interesting to hear this much detail, um, so much detail talked about this this final leg of Paul's journey. Um, spending time talking about the ship and and the shipwreck and um, Paul being spared a number of times here, um, as I, as like I said, you're seeing God's providence as He ensures that Paul will get to Rome. And uh, tomorrow in the devotion, uh, Elizabeth will finish reading the book here, uh, the book of Acts in the 28th chapter, um, to the end. As um, you know, we're going to find out that Paul is going to live there. Uh, for another two years, um, it says at his own expense, and he's going to be teaching about Jesus Christ in Rome, you know, and, and really definitely further establishing the church in Rome, and that's probably one of the reasons why Rome became such a prominent place for Christianity and, and why the Pope uh, later uh, became, or the, the I should say the bishop of the city of Rome, later became the Pope uh, because of all the influence that was done there that we're seeing here in the book of Acts, um, you know, as Paul preaches the gospel there and, and um, really establishes the church's presence. Okay, let's continue now as we pray together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Everyone, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Okay, uh, announcements for today. Uh, we're coming into the weekend here where we're having men's breakfast on Saturday at um, 8 o'clock. Elders to follow. Also, I know that preschool teachers are having um, CPR training this coming Saturday at 10 o'clock here in the Fellowship Hall. And then Sunday, of course, we have all the things that I mentioned yesterday with um, uh, the, the pot blessing happening after service, the ribbon committee, um, the council meeting, and um, oh, we're also showing a slideshow of, of our Higher Things trip, so we'd love to have you come out and join us for that. And um, I think that's all. Oh, um, uh, Lisa Limeberry is, has had a good update with um, closing up the wound from her recent uh, melanoma surgery. And then uh, we're still praying for Pastor Sutton up in Indiana, keeping him in our prayers. They're continuing to, to tend to him, and they, they hope that he'll be off the ventilator in a few days as he regains his strength. And so um, uh, just continue to be in prayer for, for all the people and, and of our ministries here at Holy Shepherd. And we look forward to seeing you this weekend, either virtually or here in person. The Lord bless this the rest of your day.